Almost every aquarium has colorful, hypnotizing jellyfish displays. As I was sketching them, my pen followed their soothing, pulsing rhythms. And then, when I read up on them, I began thinking of the most annoying sound on Earth. Pac-Man. Ouch! That, that actually hurts. Sorry, Sam. It's more of an analogy anyways. I'll let Larry Maiden, a woods hole biologist who studies jellies, explain more. I personally think the jellyfish are, you know, biologically fascinating, wonderful, beautiful, and everything else. But that doesn't mean that I want to have them take over the ocean. So Larry has been studying and documenting the rise of jellyfish populations around the globe. I was in Alaska last year and went out with a fisherman who was fishing for salmon. And when they pull up the nets, there's you know, more jellyfish than fish. Wow, why are they everywhere? Well, it has a lot to do with their biological design. And that brings me back to the Pac-Man analogy. You see, the gel in jellyfish can store oxygen, almost like a camel's hump stores water. So jellyfish don't depend as much on oxygen in the water as other marine animals do. And, and so they do a lot better as the blanket grows. Is that right? That's right, Sam. A thicker blanket of CO2 means warmer, oxygen-depleted oceans, which is perfect for jellies. Let's see if Pac-Man can explain this better. So imagine the ocean is like a maze, and the jellies are Pac-Man, and other animals are the ghosts. And the power pills are food. As the water temperature rises, oceans become more hospitable to jellies and less friendly for their predators. There's less oxygen in warmer water, which, as I mentioned, is no problem for jellies. And the warmer oceans mean a longer jelly-growing season. We end up with skyrocketing jelly populations. So it's like a, a jelly explosion. Right, and caused by the many explosions that move us around, heat our homes, and power our factories. Altering that process will in turn alter the rise of jellies. Ha, ha, ha.